This is a giant Talon II, and it is my dream hardtail. Or at least it was back in 2016 when I started mountain biking. So I started riding about six years ago, and when I was looking for my first bike, I went to the local bike shop, it just happened to be a giant dealer. I didn't know anything about bikes at that time, and they recommended the giant Talon II to me. And I saw the price tag on that thing. I think it was like $750, $800 at that time. And I was just kind of blown away because the only thing I ever knew about were department store bikes, Walmart bikes that are 150, 200 bucks max. So I'm thinking, all right, cool. I'll go to the bike shop, double that $400. I should be able to get something really awesome. We wound up buying something a lot cheaper, not a department store bike, but just barely better than that. Crappy three by drivetrain. The chain was always falling off, crappy fork. And worst of all, really bad geometry on the bike that I went with. I realized all those things pretty quickly and really regretted my decision of not buying the Talon. So fast forward about six years to today's date and I've been through a few bikes in that period of time. I'm on a full suspension bike that I really like, uh, but this came up on Facebook Marketplace for only $400 and I jumped on it as quick as I could. Now $400 may not seem like an amazing deal for a used Giant Talon 2, but it's also got some upgrades done to it that are things that I kind of would have had to do anyway. It's got race face Chester pedals, not the cheap Fuker ones that you get on Amazon. They're legit race face pedals. It also has a PNW dropper post with 150 millimeters of travel. It's externally routed like it's supposed to be, although I believe you can kind of hack it and force the cable through near the bottom bracket if you did want to do an internal dropper on one of these. So I'm going to go over a few of the things on this bike that interest me. I'm not going to go through spec by spec because you can find all that stuff online, but some of the things that kind of stand out to me, and then I want to get this on the trails and see if it lives up to my previous dreams. We'll start with one of the things that kind of stand out on this bike, which is the drivetrain. It's a micro shift advent one by nine. So that means one chain ring in front, and then you've got nine gears in the back. It is like a wide range nine speed. I'm very familiar with the Advent. It was on the Marin Bobcat trail that I tested. I also run an Advent X on my main trail bike, uh, which is basically a 10 speed version of this, a little bit more gear range in the back. The derailleur does have a clutch on it too, which helps with chain retention and chain slap and chain noise and all that kind of stuff. So I'm expecting that to be pretty good. It's got the dropper seat post. If you get a stock one of these, you're just going to get a standard seat post. The fork is another item that I'm familiar with, although not to the level of excitement as I am with that drivetrain. It's an SR Sun Tour XCM. It's a coil spring fork. It's heavy. It doesn't do a lot with dampening. It has no rebound adjustment. If you take a close look, there's oil seeping out everywhere on it. You'll also notice that the top, I don't know, maybe one third of the stanchion doesn't have the oil on it, which means uh, it's not going through its full range of motion. It only has 100 millimeters of travel to start with, but it really looks like it's using maybe 60 or 70 of those, so that's not great. The brakes are kind of standard for what you would expect in this price range. They're Tektro, they're hydraulic disc brakes. A lot of people don't like Tektro brakes. For me, they feel just about as good as entry-level Shimano disc brakes. So I really don't have any complaints with those. They were also on that Bobcat trail that I tested and they work just fine. This stem looks really long. It's probably 60 or 70 millimeters, but it just looks really long and I'm concerned that it's gonna feel very stretched out on the bike. The handlebars seem fine. They've got a little bit of back sweep, a little bit of up sweep, not as flat as I've seen on a lot of these other entry level bikes. I know I keep comparing it to that Bobcat trail, but it's similar category to that bike. And that one, the bars were almost flat and just not comfortable at all. Now, the only other weird thing about these Talon bikes is the sizing and the geometry. For certain sizes like this large and extra large, you can only get it as a 29er. Some of the mediums and the smalls, I think you can choose between the two. And I think there might even be like an extra small where you're only getting 27.5. And that makes sense. Bigger person, bigger frame, bigger wheels. What doesn't really make sense to me is that the geometry actually changes between the 27.5 frame and the 29 frame. So on the versions that come with the 27.5 inch wheels, you're gonna get a 67.5 degree head tube angle. And that's kind of the sweet spot, I would say, for a bike in this price range, in this category. It's more of an XC style bike, cross country bike. It's not super steep that it feels like you're gonna get flipped over the front of the bike, like some of these older bikes. At the same time, it's not super slack, like a downhill bike or something like that, because that's just not what this bike is intended to do. But on the 29 inch versions, like this one, the head tube angle is 68.5 degrees. So it's a full degree steeper. 
and I really don't understand why Giant has decided to do that. There's really no reason to make a 29-inch frame any steeper or slacker in terms of the head tube angle. I do get the 29-inch wheels roll over things a little bit easier, but why would you kind of take that better rollover capability and then sort of put a drawback to that with a steeper head angle? So just to compare it back to that Bobcat Trail, that Marin Bobcat Trail, that thing was a 67 degree head tube angle on a 29er. That felt pretty good to me. So I'm a little bit concerned on how this is gonna feel on some of the more steeper sections, some more rocky, chunky sections and things like that. All that's left to do now is to get this thing out on the trail. I'll give you some thoughts, some feedback as I'm riding it. See if some of these things that I like live up to my expectations. See if some of these things that I'm kind of concerned about are actually a problem or, you know, maybe they're not. So let's get on the trails and find out. All right, we're gonna start out with a little bit of a climb. I'm in Forest Hill Park. This is probably one of the most extended climbs in the area. So we'll find out how the bike does on this, specifically that Advent X drivetrain, because it's compatible with up to a 46 teeth cassette in the rear. Although this bike's only specced with a 42 tooth. So we'll see on some of these steeper sections how it does. Now people obviously say that hardtails climb the best and I have mixed thoughts on that because if you're hitting rocks and stuff on a climb it's kind of bouncing you around it's hard to keep your cadence how you want it the rear suspension on a full suspension bike can just keep that rear tire planted so I am in the lowest gear right now and I will say it is a little tough I had to take a break to catch my breath a little bit to be able to talk cohesively. But overall, it climbed just fine. The 42 tooth got me up it, didn't have any problems, but anything much steeper than that, and I think I really would have wanted another gear to go into, or just the easier gear to go into. One thing I forgot to mention was the Max's Ardent tires that come specced on this 29 by 2.25. I actually had them on my Vetus Nucleus and really liked them you know they're not a super aggressive tire when things get soft and loose but they roll fast they grip I think more than you would think Woo! so it passes the downhill test too in my opinion that little section right there even with that steepish head tube angle it really didn't feel that bad and I will say that longer stem too kind of forces you to get your weight over the front of the bike which is what you need if you want that front tire to give you some traction just sitting and pedaling it does feel a little bit stretched out like bars a little more forward than i would like them little staircase let's see how noisy it is really like no chain slap at all from that drivetrain Clutch is doing its job. Now for the shifting itself, it's shifting really good right now. When I first got it, it was shifting funky. Took the derailleur off and the hanger was a little bit out of alignment. So I bent it back. It's good now. Shifts are relatively smooth. I mean, it's not a high-end drivetrain, but it goes to the gear you put it in. All right, tires, let's go. Sweeping turns like that, you're better and faster with tires like these versus, uh, I don't know, Asagai or DHF. So really the only gripe about this bike that I have is the fork because it just kind of sucks. There's no way to sugarcoat that. Coil spring fork, not good to start with. Used bike, it's just rough. Sometimes I feel like I could just be on a rigid fork and feel about the same. All right, let's see if we can get this. Oh man. I think some rocks have gotten moved. That was quite deep there. The climb out's a tough one. It's a good tire test. Wet tires. Now, accelerate. 
Ah, one more time. Had some tire slippage. That was a little closer. Let's try one more time. <laughs> so close. Yeah. Haha. <sighs> The 20th time is a charm. The dropper post makes a huge difference on this bike, as it does just about any bike. Drop it down, let the bike move around. You're not getting hit by the seat and lean the bike easier. It's one of the things when I did that Bobcat Trail series, one of the three main things that constitute a good bike. An air fork, this doesn't have. One by drivetrain, it does. And then the dropper post, thanks to the previous owner. So with that being said, this bike's only one thing away from being a really good bike. And that's what I plan to explore in the next video. Seat down for some fun. Really wish there was a better fork on this to eat a little bit of that up. Oh yeah, that kind of did feel like I was going to go over, but I was braking pretty heavy too. Oh yeah, and the brakes, I don't know, they're fine. Feels good as my Shimano's. So stick around for the next video. I'll be throwing an air fork on the front of this thing. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, that way you get notified when that happens. Give me a thumbs up if you got something useful. Leave some comments if you've ridden a Talon, if you own a Talon, if you have any idea why Giant decided to make this head tube steeper on these 29er frames, let me know. I'd love to find out. I'm going to finish my ride, and I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, that's hard. <laughs> seat is not low enough for stuff like that got whacked in the balls with the seat <sighs> <sighs>